system design interview or architecture interview is the most complex among all the interviews that a software engineer needs to pass in order to get a job. And despite the fact that system design interview doesn't actually want to fail you, but rather gauge your experience and seniority, many engineers fail those interviews. So today I want to help you and provide you with some architecture interview tips. Let's go. So tips number one is gathering the requirements. Engineers frequently just jump into solving the solution, drawing the boxes, connecting them with arrows and so on. However, the big problem is that there is a high chance that you're solving the wrong problem. After you get the initial description of the problem, don't jump to the solution, but spend 10 minutes gathering the requirements. You need to gather both functional and non-functional requirements. Functional requirements answer the question what the system should do. For example, the user should receive an email after the registration or when I tap the button, the message should be sent and so on and so on. Non-functional requirements answer the question how the system should behave, not what it should do, but rather how it should be doing it. In the example with the email, we can state that uh, this email should reach the user within five minutes interval. Or we can say that the uh, web page should be opened within five seconds in 99th percentile. That would be a performance requirement. So spend 10 minutes going through functional and non-functional requirements. Ask the questions. Who are the people who are going to use the system? How the system should behave from multiple perspectives? like security, performance, availability, maintainability, etc. If you don't know what to ask, there's a list on the Wikipedia of non-functional requirements or architecture attributes. Tip number two is you need not to forget to address the requirements that you guard in the first step. Frequent mistake is that people are gathering all these performance and availability requirements, but forget to address them. For example, people would ask how many user requests we have and get a number like 10,000 and then do not introduce load balancing and horizontal scaling for their compute. So that kind of doesn't make sense. Why would you gather the requirements if you don't address them at all? So don't forget to do that. In order to help yourself, at the end of the designing phase, go through all the requirements and check if you have addressed each of them. Do you want to know how to design proper software systems? Do you want to grow to a senior or staff engineer positions? I developed a business-oriented system design course specifically to achieve those goals. We're gonna learn how to identify and gather the requirements and also prioritize them, how to address performance, security, reliability requirements, how to document software architectures, and how to make architecture decisions. The, the course consists of uh, 10 lectures, 10 home tasks, and the final work. You're gonna receive the graduation certificates by the end of the course. All the details by the links below the video. Tip number three is about uh, not introducing anything that was not required. Another frequent mistake is uh, that engineers are applying this or that tactics like horizontal scaling or caches or queues and all other stuff just because they had some experience with a particular technology. Frequently engineers just would say, I would use Kafka here without understanding if they need Kafka there in the first place. So don't just use any technology whatsoever just because you have experience with it. Every choice should be justified. So if you actually need a queue, for example, because you need to reliably send a message uh, to several consumers, then Kafka can be a good choice. But if you don't have such a requirement, just don't do that. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, next tip is be mindful about your time. In order to get better seniority at system design interview, you should be showing this seniority from all the perspectives. And time management is one of those. When you get introduced to the interview and to the task itself, try to manage the time expectations. Say, hey, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend 10 minutes gathering the requirements. Then I will require 20, 25 minutes actually coming up with a solution. And then we can have 10, 15 minutes to answer the questions of the interviewer. 
and be mindful about the time. So have some kind of a timer or you can take a look just at the time that passed after the interview, but try to make yourself fit into these time periods. And you can highlight this. So for example, after the first 10 minutes, while you were gathering the requirements, you can say, hey, the time for gathering the requirements is left. So let's proceed to the actual solution. Why it's important? Because for the system design interview, you will have like one hour or one hour and a half. And you, if you really know a lot, you still won't be able to show and demonstrate all of this knowledge to your interviewer. So what you need to do is to spend the time wisely, show that you can actually solve the task. And then near the end of the interview, you can say something like that. Look, we solved the problem, but we can elaborate on this, on this, on that. Like, for example, to take a better focus at the security or dig deeper into performance requirements or into storage design. What are you interested the most? So in that way, you will be able to, to demonstrate your sincere interest and actually show the knowledge that is relevant to the position that you're being interviewed. OK, the next tip is how to approach the design itself. So don't try to solve the whole problem in one go. That's impossible. What you actually need to do is to try to come up with the simplest system that would solve the problem at a very low scale and then address all the problems that you see. For example, you need to design Twitter. Instead of going with complex sharding schemes, caching, making the feed algorithm and all that stuff, just start with a single machine design. Like for example, we have one web service, we have one database, we have one web application and show that this is how you're going to store the, the tweets. This is how you're going to serve the tweets. And then when you say, OK, what happens if the amount of tweets is not in thousands or millions, but actually in billions, then what we need to do? Then there will be problem about performance. So we need to shard the database. There will be problem with the amount of requests. So we need to apply horizontal scaling for compute. OK, we will have some data that uh, should be cached and we need to address the problem of uh, serving the content as fast as possible. Then we're leveraging caching at different levels and so on and so on. So make the transition from the very simple design to the more sophisticated ones. And the last point is don't be afraid of not knowing something. It's actually much better to just tell the interviewer that you don't know something or you don't have any experience with a particular stuff, with, let's say with Kafka or something, but rather than lying about your experience. Just say like, I, I don't have experience with using Kafka, but I have experience with other technologies, so we can try to apply them. Good luck with your interviews. Of course, if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button down below, press the ring to get notification about new videos and leave a comment. What is your best architecture interview tip? Thank you very much. See you soon.